Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Katie and I am the owner of Wild Blush Creations. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how I created this neon pink leopard print split tumbler. I absolutely love how it turned out and I hope you all are so excited to learn how to make this tumbler with me. As always, I will have everything I used listed and linked down below in the description box. And you may even find some discount codes down there for you as well. And if you are new to the channel, don't forget to like this video and subscribe. I put out new videos every Monday and Friday. And if you want to see how I created this pretty tumbler, keep on watching. So I already started out by spray painting and prepping my tumbler white. I am working with a 30 ounce skinny straight tumbler from Makerflow Crafts and I am just going to be taking some painter's tape and taping directly down the center as best as I can. I always like to start taping off the bottom of the cup that way I can get a better rough idea of the exact center of the cup. And then I'm going to just put two pieces on other side following that guide tape from the bottom of the tumbler. And then once we have our cup taped off, I'm going to be spraying the exposed side with Krylon Neon Fluorescent Pink. And once that paint is dry, I'm going to be going in with my two glitters. For the chunky glitter, I am using That's Hot from Glitter Hard Co. And then Regina George from Peachy Olive Glitters for the fine glitter. And to apply that, I'm just going to be using Mod Podge. That way I can have a little bit more control and we can do the white glitter right after this on the other side. So I'm just taking a soft paintbrush and I'm putting a fairly generous amount of Mod Podge on this side of the cup and just going with even strokes up and down to make sure we have good coverage and it's not streaky. And you want to make sure you work pretty fast because as you all know, Mod Podge dries extremely quickly. And now that this half of the cup is thoroughly coated in Mod Podge, again I am going in with that's hot from Glitter Heart Co. And I am just applying this chunky glitter all over this half of the cup. And I am not putting this glitter on the bottom. I'm only going to be putting the fine glitter on the bottom. That way we don't have to worry about a lumpy, uneven bottom of our cup. And now I'm going in with Regina George from Peachy Olive Glitters and I'm going to start doing the bottom and then I will be putting it on top of the previous chunky glitter to fill in any of the open gaps. And to help save time and save epoxy in the future, to get the chunky glitter to lay flat, I'm just going in with my gloved hand and I'm gently patting it down and I'm pressing it down. I'm not rubbing my hand because with the Mod Podge still wet, if you rub or shift your hand around too much, you are going to move your glitter. So you just want to be extra careful with this step and press the glitter down. Don't rub it. After that, I'm going to be peeling off the tape right away because if we wait for the Mod Podge to dry, we will risk pulling off some of our glitter with the tape and we don't want to do that. And once the tape is removed, I'm going to go immediately in with the Mod Podge to apply our white glitter. And when you do the sides right next to the pink, you just want to go nice and slow and be very careful. That way you don't accidentally get any Mod Podge onto the pink. It's okay if you get a little bit on there, but just try and be as careful as possible. And now for our white glitter, I am using Diamonds from Glitter Heart Co. I absolutely love this white glitter. It is a nice, 
fine pure white it is so perfect for this cup and once the white glitter is fully on I am going to set this aside to let the cup dry overnight that way we can make sure the Mod Podge is fully dry and won't cause any issues when we go in with our epoxy. And now once the glitter is dry and the cup has been sealed with Rust-Oleum 3x Clear Matte Spray Paint, Make sure that you really seal your tumbler really, really well. I think I sealed both sides at least five or six times because I really don't want any of the glitter shifting in to the other glitter color. And I even separated my epoxy into two separate cups. That way we can apply one side at a time, starting with the white with my turner off. I'm just going to be applying little bits at a time, making sure if there's any rogue pieces of the pink glitter, I can easily wipe that off. And then as I move along, I will just be moving my turner manually by hand to add the rest of the epoxy onto the white half. And then moving into the pink side, I'm just doing the same exact thing, adding little bits of epoxy at a time, working nice and slow, moving my turner by hand as I go, getting a nice full even coverage. And once the epoxy is fully applied, I'm going to let this spin for about two hours and then I can apply a second coat because I am using CC DIY Fast Set today. So now that our second layer of epoxy is fully dry to the touch, I am going to be going in and sanding just the white half because from what you can tell a little bit, there are still some pokey bits from the pink glitter. So before I sand that side, I want to go in with one more coat of epoxy. So I'm sanding the white half first to get that nice and smooth. So that way, once this third coat of epoxy is fully dry, we can apply the water slide onto the white half right away. While we wait for the third coat of epoxy to dry, I went ahead and printed out my water slide. I got this file off of Etsy. I will have that linked down below. And I am going to be sealing the water slide first with two coats of Rust-Oleum 2 times Clear Matte, followed by one coat of the Clear Plasti Dip, and then two more coats of the Clear Matte Rust-Oleum. And before we apply the water slide, I'm just going to go in and sand down that pink half. And then once that side is all sanded smooth, I'm going to wash it with some dish soap and warm water to get rid of any of the debris from sanding. And now with a dish of room temperature, maybe a little bit warmer than room temperature water, I am just going to be soaking my entire sheet of water slide to get it to release from the backing. And once that is ready, we can go ahead and start applying that to our cup. And make sure before you start applying your water slide that you get the surface of your cup wet first. I forgot to, so I had to quick fix that, luckily before it was too late, because if you're working off of a dry surface, it's really hard to move around the water slide once it's on there, so having that wet surface gives it the ability to slide around. So once I realized I forgot to do that step, I carefully lifted off the water slide and added some water onto my cup. 
and then applying the water slide as straight as possible and doing little small bits at a time, rotating the tumbler towards myself. And then I'm going to go in with my little squeegee silicone brush and brushing out all of those air pockets and excess water as I go. And the main reason why I like also sealing with the Plasti Dip as well as the clear spray paint is because the Plasti Dip gives the water slide a little bit more elasticity and reduces the chance of your water slide ripping or cracking as you are applying it. And as soon as I'm done applying that water slide, while it is still wet, I am taking my X-Acto knife with a very sharp blade and I'm just trimming off the excess water slide very carefully so that way I don't accidentally rip or tear it. And once all of the excess water slide is trimmed off, I am going to set it aside for a few hours to fully dry. So now I'm going in with another layer of epoxy. We just need to do one layer before going forward and adding the rest of our decals onto the cup. So I'm just going in with a generous amount of epoxy and then I'm going to let this dry for two hours until it is fully dry to the touch. Again, I am using the Fast Setting Epoxy from Counterculture DIY. And it only takes about two hours to dry in my environment. And now that the cup is nice and dry, I am just going to go in and clean up the rim and lightly sand anywhere that I need to before we apply the rest of our decals. And to do the rim, I'm just going in with my Dremel rotary tool with a 60 grit sanding band. And by doing this, we are going to get a nice thin line of the stainless steel at the top of the cup exposed so that way we can create a nice solid seal. Just make sure when you do this you go very slowly and you have a nice steady hand that way you don't accidentally nick down into your epoxy and cause any mess ups on your cup. And then after that step is done, I'm going to wash the cup with water and some Dawn dish soap and make sure it's fully dry. And now to do the striping between the sides of our cup, I'm going in with this silver metallic washi tape that I've had for a little over two years from when I first started doing cups. Um, so I will try to find the exact set that I got that came with a bunch of different colors, but I really liked using this because it was the perfect size to split off both sides of the cup. And now for our Hot Mess Express decal, I got this digital file off of an Etsy shop called Bear Trends Digi Design. She has so many good SVGs on there and a lot of them already come with an offset, which I absolutely love. And it takes the extra work out of that for me. And when working with offset files, I always find it easiest for me personally to layer the vinyl on the actual cup. 
I don't like layering it off of the cup because I have a tendency to get more bubbles in between the vinyl layers that way and it always for some reason ends up not being completely centered. So that's just why I like layering it when it's already on the cup. Now this next step I'm about to do right here is super important before we go in with epoxy. I'm going to be sealing in our washi tape and vinyl with Quick Coat from Counterculture DIY. This is just a polyurethane sealer and the reason that I am doing this is mainly because I have had experience with washi tape severely repelling my epoxy and this will prevent that from happening and it will also prevent anything like the vinyl or the washi tape from lifting. And make sure to give that quick coat a good 45 minutes to an hour to fully dry, otherwise it will become cloudy underneath the epoxy. And then to finish off this tumbler, I am just going to be going in with two final coats of epoxy and then that's pretty much it. So if you guys liked this video and you learned a lot from this tutorial, again, don't forget to like this video and I will see you all in the next one. Bye guys.